So we're in the Valley of the Kings, which is also known as the Valley of the Gates of the Kings. Um, and it's literally a valley in Egypt where they would cut, uh, make, well, they would cut tombs into the rock um, between the 16th and 11th century BC. So it's during the New Kingdom. And that's the same as yesterday where we saw Karnak. Most of Karnak was built during the New Kingdom. So it's the 18th, 19th and 20th dynasties. Um, and Seti the first over here is one we're going to start with, which is kind of the main, well, it's one of the best ones, one of the most extensive, one of the most beautifully decorated, and one of the best renovated as well. Um, you actually have to pay extra to get into this one. It's about, I don't know, 20 quid extra, something like that. Um, but we want to get in here before the tourists kind of kick off and it starts getting really busy. So we're here at just, sort of, just gone seven in the morning. So I think it opens at six, so we're not too, um, too late. So I just want to set the scene for you a little bit. So you remember yesterday when we spoke about Akhenaten and how he created that monotheistic religion. And in doing so, a lot of the wealth in Egypt had been used building Amarna and it had created a lot of sort of social upheaval. Well, Tutankhamun, as you remember, kind of did his level best to return things to the status quo. But Seti I also inherited um, that bad situation. The work wasn't done yet. And so a lot of Seti's reign focused on um, religious reform, but also recapturing lands that had been taken during the times of Akhenaten, when Akhenaten had kind of neglected relationships with other kingdoms. In particular, um, he focused on re-establishing Egypt's sovereignty over Canaan and Syria. And these were areas that were under control of the Hittites. And so he was involved with a number of battles with the Hittites. And whilst he didn't crush the Hittites and you know, completely get rid of them, he did win back some very significant areas of Egypt, which hadn't been under Egyptian control since Akhenaten. And so generally we consider Seti to be quite a successful Pharaoh. And so in today's uh, exploration of his tomb, uh, we're expecting to see references to perhaps um, war gods. Uh, we're expecting to see perhaps references to specific battles that he won against the Hittites. These are the kind of things that we're going to be looking out for. Whether or not I'll be able to actually spot them and recognize what we're looking at is another thing. But I can assure you those kind of things will be in here. So just one final bit, a little tidbit of information for you. So Seti is named after Set, um, and that's the god of the desert, storms, disorder, violence, and foreigners um, in ancient Egypt. I think that's quite interesting, considering that um, he's sort of well known for his battle success, his military prowess, if you will, um, that he's named after the god of violence. He sort of resembles an aardvark or an African wild dog or a donkey. So he's a bit of a sort of a ambiguous creature. <laughs> This is one of the very deep tombs as well. On the GoPro it's flashing, but in reality it's not. <laughs> but look, look at this now. You see the way it goes so deep into the um, tomb? The idea is that you're actually descending into the world of the afterlife. It's almost a journey we are taking by going down into the tomb, deep down. And this is the crocodile. Uh, is there's, a, there's a crocodile uh, god. That again is the crocodile do uh, mm -hmm. god. Which is interesting. We didn't, we didn't see any of the crocodile god yesterday uh, when we were at, uh, well, we didn't spot it at least when we were at Karnak. Thoth, this is the, the god of hieroglyphs and writing. Now, this, this is a really, really cool feature. This is actually a dam. Uh, a well, sorry, not a dam. Uh, they, they're not sure exactly what they were for, but they, they come in some of the later um, tombs, and they think they might have actually stopped water coming down into the tomb, so it actually had a functional purpose. I'm trying to be respectful, because it is technically a tomb. But some people down here are being extremely loud. So 
say this is actually really, really cool. I like this a lot. So this is Anubis, and he's the god of funerary rites, a protector of graves, and guide to the underworld. And this is awesome because you can see he's holding the pharaoh on the shoulder here, and obviously this being his tomb, presumably Anubis is going to guide him uh, into the, uh, guide him through the process of, you know, death. Um, that's my assumption, at least. But really cool. I think for me, Anubis like just has a certain mystique uh, about him. I just think the way he's portrayed in his face as well. Uh, there's something just very captivating about him. One thing to mention, I'll go into some more detail later, is that most of the tombs were raided uh, and the artifacts and wealth was stolen from them. It was only really Tutankhamun uh, who still had um, you know, all the various things in his uh, tomb that he was buried with. So now we're going down further, another level. I don't know about you, but I love the uh, mm, stars and the teeth. Museum, the alabaster, the Seti, the first coffin in the British Museum. Maybe we'll leave that bit out. Don't want to get old Blighty in a bad name. This is Hathor, which is one of the first gods. And she's a kind, motherly god. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Well, ladies and gents, that certainly didn't disappoint, did it? Interesting to not see uh, battle scenes, but perhaps I'm sure they're mentioned in the hieroglyphics. Um, well, I'm puffed though. Whew, but you're probably thinking, why don't those bloody ladies show a bit of respect, eh? Keep their voices down, not yell in the tomb. Well, don't worry, ladies and gents, because viewers, there is something called the Pharaoh's Curse. <laughs> And it's said that the Pharaoh's curse caused illness, um, it caused bad luck and even death. And um, Lord Carnarvon, who actually financed the um, 
excavation of Tutankhamun, he actually died. Um, and very shortly afterwards, um, he got a mosquito bite and when he was shaving, he cut that uh, mosquito bite and it became infected, which led to blood poisoning and the development of pneumonia. Um, and so a lot of people sort of, you know, attribute this to the Pharaoh's curse. But um, jokes aside, obviously we don't wish the death on anyone. We don't wish death on anyone. But you know, maybe those, those ladies will miss their bus home today and that'll be the Pharaoh's curse. Get a bit of bad luck. <laughs> I'm going to go and have a look at uh, Ramses III and he is um, considered to be essentially the last great monarch uh, of the New Kingdom. He basically reigned um, during a time that saw um, a decrease in the economic and political power of Egypt, um, made worse by a number of sort of uh, invasions. Um, and he did, he was known as the um, warrior pharaoh, so he was quite um, successful and one of the things he did was he defended against the sea people but in doing so um, he, he did substantially weaken the Egyptian military but nonetheless he did sort of slow that decline but ultimately um, you know it was sort of coming towards the end of that real uh, era of sort of success and power uh, and so he's an interesting one and funny enough um, he was actually murdered um, in the end he was uh, assassinated um, and that was in association but with his uh, his queen was the one who sort of caused it so yeah interesting fella in, in fact funny enough he beat the sea people twice once was in Lebanon on land but the second time was actually at sea and the Egyptians weren't known for particular prowess at sea warfare so what he did was he lured them into the Nile Delta and then he literally ambushed them with archers on the banks of the Nile and actually used sea hooks to hook at the ships uh, and drag them in towards the uh, the banks where then uh, you know his soldiers could jump on the ships essentially and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat um, and that's how he defeated the sea people at sea he turned uh, a disadvantage into an advantage look at this now look how busy it's gotten they're all just underneath the little shade that is around here so we're just going to try and find this tomb then <laughs> You can see what happens when you don't pay the extra fee for the quieter ones. The peaceful idea of visiting a tomb is officially over. It's not exactly giving you the sense of atmosphere that a tomb should. But you know, I think there's enough of that pharaoh's curse to go around for everyone. <laughs> Two so yeah, Grant top tip, go and pay the extra money and see setting the first. It's a ten times better experience than this. You didn't even get to go you don't even get to go all the way into the tomb, so you don't even see him uh, where the coffin would have gone, the sarcophagus. This is definitely Instagram versus reality. <laughs> Poor old Ramses the third. Now we Poor old Ramses the third. All those people bumping into each other, and shouting in there. Bloody hell! I was going to do uh, Ramses the fourth after this, son of Ramses the uh, third, who's an interesting uh, pharaoh because obviously he inherited the throne from his father Ramses the um, third, who had just been assassinated. Um, I was going to do a whole bit about it, but bloody hell, not that it's worth it. We'll get in there. And I'll be like, oh, and here's this and that. And you lot, all you'll be seeing is back of, back of a load of bloody tourist heads. So we've come up with a better strategy, which is forget about the uh, specific history of the individual pharaohs. Just go to the furthest away tomb <laughs> and figure out who it is when we get there. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, this is Upper Egypt. And this is South, Lower Egypt. South and North. Yes. Yeah, south and North. And North. This is flag. flag. Yeah. Ah, that and makes this sense. This is the map. This Yeah, and so this is the papyrus because of the Nile Delta, yeah? Yes. yes yeah, and then this is the lotus because it grows here in the water? Yes. Right. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Before the work in here and come the message, stop work, the king he died and stop. Oh, the king died, so they stopped. Mm -hmm. ah. So this is complete. Yes, complete. complete. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now the ceiling complete. The stuff have uh, the wall, and the stuff have the ceiling. Yeah. And the stuff the wall not completed. Yeah. Just a sketch. Yeah. Just the sketches, yeah. Sketches, sketches. Because they didn't, they didn't finish because the king died. Oh, the interesting. Sketch. This is much better, there's no one here. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, there's the actual tomb here. Yeah. Yeah. So th this is the this is the god of the afterlife? The Zeus, god of the afterlife and yeah. god of the dead and in in final judgment, judge. Yeah. And the and Bonapes of Paradise. Oh, this is, I've not seen one with the sarcophagus. This is the first one. Wow. Down in the ceiling. Down in the ceiling. Maybe no floor. No floor. You joking? Really? Oh, this is the new jumping. Wow. Shit. 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 <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Amy, have a look. So I'm currently lying on the floor next to it. <laughs> look at that. This is amazing. Oh, you can see it here. There's a mirror. I didn't, you don't need to lie down. The king have uh, no hat. <laughs> down, down, the one, down, down. I like it. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Down further. I like it. Oh, no. Alright, that is quite something. Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I'm always a bit conflicted about those sort of things. In, the, in one way, it's just a bit of harmless fun, but I hope we weren't, we weren't desecrating a tomb. <laughs> we obviously, anything. we didn't touch anything. We didn't touch the tomb, so we were still respectful. Oh. And also, um, we obviously have a great respect for, you know, tombs and stuff like that uh, in general. So I think that was borderline, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we do these B-roll scenes of me just like wandering around the complex, I swear every time I like forget how to walk. I was like, how do I walk? Is, um, is this a normal walk? <laughs> if you'd like to see Tutankhamun's tomb and see us get seriously spooked in Thutmose the IV's tomb, please go to the full version of this episode on our channel. It's called Valley of the Kings, full tour and history. You can just pick up where you left off 19 minutes in. Seriously, Thutmose's tomb is really creepy. You want to watch it, trust me. Oh God, I'm scared. <laughs> I just freaked out for a second. Like and subscribe. <laughs>